Have you been trying to implement change on your worship team? Are you trying to get your worship team to show up on time or to memorize their music or just to try anything new? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can do that, how to implement change in your worship team. Coming up. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com. This is the place where we talk about how to lead yourself well, lead your church well, and lead worship well. So if you're interested in that, click subscribe down below and let's get into it because today we're talking about change. Not like quarters and dimes, but like creating change in your worship ministry, getting people and maybe even yourself to do things differently than you have been doing it. My computer screen just turned off. Getting people to do things differently than you have been doing it. And that, if you've been in ministry for probably a month, you know that it is difficult to get people to accept and embrace change in the church. And so I just, I'm not going to talk about the entire church. That's a whole different conversation of moving a church from doing things one way to doing things another way. Maybe you're going through that in your church right now. But in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can implement change just on your worship team, just in that one area of ministry that you are in charge of or involved with. How do you get people to step outside of the norm, step outside of the comfort of routine, and do things a little bit differently. And we know why we want to implement change, right? It's because the way that we're doing things right now is probably not the best way that we could be doing things, right? There's always room for improvement, and if we want to improve, we have to do things a little bit differently. So maybe feel that in your worship team right now. I'm going to show you how you can implement change, but before we get there, I want to hear from you. What is the one biggest change you're trying to implement into your worship team right now? What are you trying to get your worship team to do differently? Let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you in a second. Thanks so much for leaving your answer down below. Let's get into it. How do you implement change in your worship team? The first way to implement change into your worship team is to cast the vision. Cast the vision. Actually tell your team the change that you are trying to implement. And I know that this sounds super obvious, but we always skip over the obvious step. Let me ask you this. How long have you been dwelling on that thought of that change that you wish you could implement into your worship team and it's been frustrating you for the past six months that nobody has changed? How long have you been thinking about that? And have you actually said anything to the people on your worship team about the change you want to implement? Let's say you want your team to memorize their music and they've never memorized their music before. And you, maybe you, have started memorizing your music. And you show up and you're starting to get the process down of memorizing your music. And you look around at your electric guitar player on Sunday morning while you're leading. And he's still just glued to his music stand, right? Just staring at it, not looking up at all. And you are frustrated. But in reality, you've had these thoughts in your head. You've been thinking about them for six months now. But you've never told anybody about them. So they don't even know that that change is incoming. So the first step for implementing change in your worship ministry is to actually tell people and cast the vision. When I say cast the vision, it means telling people where you wish your worship team could be in the future and how you're going to get there. For instance, you would say, if you want them to memorize their music, I want us to be free to lead worship, not locked to our music stands, therefore, I would like us to move towards memorizing our music. And you can say it confidently, boldly. Not everybody's going to agree with you. You're probably going to make some people uncomfortable, maybe even a little upset. But if you know that it is for the betterment of your worship team, then you've got to commit to it. And you have to start by telling people what the change is, what the vision is for your worship team. And that leads us into the second way. To implement change into your worship team. Let's talk about the way in which you cast the vision. All right. And I kind of already alluded to it a little bit when I gave you that example. But when I'm talking about casting the vision, 
The second way to implement change in your worship team is to show your team the benefits of the change that you're trying to implement. I think so often when we cast the vision as leaders in the church, not just in worship ministry, but just in general, we just tell people, we are going to do this. We are going to implement this change. We are going to get rid of collecting offering during the service and put a box at the door when you walk in. We are going to memorize our music, right? We just tell them the change that we're trying to implement, but that is not attractive to people. What is attractive are the benefits of the change that is being implemented. We aren't just implementing things just on a whim. We are doing it because of a specific reason. So if you want your team to buy into the change, then the benefits have to outweigh the uncomfortableness of making that change. So I will use memorizing your music again as an example. And this is something that I do on my worship team. It's not really a change that I implement uh, on my team. It's just the way that my team functions is that people are expected to memorize their music, but that is a change for a lot of people. So whenever people come to join my worship team, it's spelled out very explicitly in my worship team guidelines, which by the way, you can find it down in the description below. In my worship team guidelines, it talks about memorizing your music. And the reason that we do that is so that we can be free in our worship. The more you focus on the musical side of things in your preparation, the freer you are to lead spiritually whenever you're actually in the act of leading worship. So that is the benefit. There is freedom when we memorize our music and we aren't locked to the music stand. I know, and maybe you're like, I don't memorize my music and this sounds crazy for you, but I'm telling you, this is the benefits that I've experienced personally and plenty of people on my worship team have experienced. So I communicate those benefits to the people joining the worship team so that when I implement that change in the way that they might normally lead worship, they aren't like, Spencer just wants me to memorize my music. There's no reason. No, there is a very specific reason. And so if there is any change that you want to implement into your worship team, don't start by telling people the change. Start by telling them the benefits of the change. Start by telling them the benefits of why you're doing what you're doing. So think about that change that you left in the comments below, that one thing that you're trying to change in your worship team. And don't just think, what is the change I'm trying to implement? Think about why? Why do I want things to change? And then communicate that to your team. And if there's any way that you can show them a tangible example of that, do it. For instance, memorizing music. When I lead worship, I've got my music memorized and people can on my team can see the freedom that I have to do things in a certain way when I'm not locked to my music stand, staring at the music the entire time. Show your team the benefits of the change you wish to implement. Number three, teach the change. Teach it over and 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 over again. People need to hear these things multiple times. Like not just once, not just I told my team they need to show up on time for rehearsal one time, but I need to tell them five or six times, because the first time they probably aren't going to hear it. The second time they might hear it a little bit, but not really care. The third time they're going to be like, man, he already said that two times. Maybe this is kind of important. The fourth time they're going to be like, okay, I, I hear you. The fifth time they might be like, hmm, maybe I'll try that out. The benefits sound pretty good. So teach it over and over and over again. And when you think you've communicated the expectation or the change enough, communicate it twice as many times. Take the amount of times you've communicated and multiply it by two and you will start to break through the layer of people actually understanding and receiving the change you are trying to implement. So teach them. When do you teach them? Well, you teach them, I think one of the best ways is through your worship team devotionals. I think that that's a great way to teach them. All too often, just a quick aside, worship team devotionals have become like just this uh, just this time to do like a general Bible study, but I like to have my worship team devotionals be specific to the worship team, and that affords you the opportunity to talk about some of these changes. Uh, I kind of mentioned that in the worship team 
rehearsal blueprint that I put together. There's a link down to it in the description below, Worship Rehearsal Blueprint. Check that out if you're interested in uh, learning more about how to run the perfect worship rehearsal. Let's move on to number four. The fourth way to implement change into your worship team is to model it. If you aren't implementing the change for yourself, your worship team's not going to do it either. If the leader of the team cannot even commit to the change that they are trying to implement on a consistent basis, what hope does your team have for implementing that change? Because they're going to see that and they're going to be like, yeah, he doesn't really care. She doesn't really care. She's saying it, but she's not doing it. So model the change that you're trying to implement. Lead the way in the change that you're trying to implement. Memorizing your music. Again, I will use the example because I like to memorize my music. If I tell my whole team that I need to memorize, that we are going to memorize our music, and then I still show up at rehearsal with my music stand and I'm constantly looking at it, they're going to be like, okay, he said to memorize our music, but he's not even doing it. Or to take it a step further, maybe I am trying to memorize my music, but I'm not doing a very good job of it. And every time I lead on Sunday morning, I don't know what chords I'm playing. I don't know the the words that I'm supposed to sing. It's not modeling that you might be modeling that you're trying to memorize your music, but you aren't modeling the benefits because it's not working out very well. So model the change that you're trying to implement. If you don't do it as a leader, your worship team will never do it either. And finally, number five, the fifth way to implement change into your worship team is to hold your worship team accountable. We've already casted the vision. We've shown them the benefits. We've taught the change over and over and over and over and over again. We've modeled it. Now our worship team knows what change we are trying to implement. And now we need to set the expectation that that change is going to happen and we need to hold them accountable. So it is challenging your team to step up to the task, the mission of implementing this change. And then if they don't do it, it needs to be a conversation. You know, if the change that you're trying to implement in your worship team is simply, we're going to show up to worship rehearsal on time. Maybe you have some people who are chronically late on your worship team and they constantly show up 15 minutes late to rehearsal, and the change you want to implement is that they would show up on time, then you need to hold them accountable to that. And what does that look like? Well, first of all, it starts with actually starting your worship rehearsals on time, and you're not going to wait for that person who constantly shows up late to your worship rehearsals. You're not going to wait for them to actually start your rehearsal. So when they come in, you're already two songs into your rehearsal, or halfway through your devotional, and they've missed it. And then the next step is, if we can't commit to being at worship rehearsal on time, then you can't play on Sunday. <gasps> right? How dare I tell somebody they can't play on Sunday, right? They can't lead on Sunday. Well, those are, that's what it means to be a leader. If you have expectations for your team, a change that you want to implement, you eventually have to hold people to accountable. You have to hold people accountable to that. And here's the thing. We talked about modeling change. If you aren't willing to actually implement the change in your own worship leading, your team's not going to take it seriously. But furthermore, if you don't hold your worship team members accountable to the change, then let's say you have five people on your team, three of them are willing to make the change, two of them are not, and you don't hold those two people accountable, the other three people are going to see that it's not really serious because they're doing it. The other two people aren't putting the work in. You aren't saying anything about that. So obviously you don't care that much. That's what they think. So you got to hold everybody accountable to the change that you wish to implement. There they were, the five ways to implement change into your worship team. That's how you do it. You cast the vision. You show them the benefits as you cast the vision. You don't just tell them the change. You tell them the benefits and the change that needs to happen in order to achieve those benefits. Then you teach it over and over and over and over and over again during your worship team devotional time, during your worship rehearsals. Number four, you model it. You actually set the example for the people of your team and you be the first one to implement the change you wish to see in your team. And then number five, you hold people accountable. After you have 
taught it over and over again after you've modeled it and you've set the expectation, hold people accountable. And if they aren't trying to implement change, then that needs to be a conversation. And you say, this is the direction we're moving as a team. And so I need you to be on board or you can't be on the team anymore, <gasps> right? So that is how you implement change into your worship team. Like I said earlier in this video, the best time and way to implement change into your worship team is in your worship team rehearsals. And I believe that a solid worship team rehearsal structure is the best way to lead your team. That's the that allows you the opportunity to talk about these changes. And that's why I put together the worship rehearsal blueprint down in the description below. You can check it out. There's a link down there. In that worship rehearsal blueprint, I share with you the five essential pieces to the perfect worship rehearsal that will allow you to lead your team musically, relationally, and spiritually. If you can lead your team in those three ways, you do a great job leading your worship team. And I lay it all out in the perfect order. I even give you a sample rehearsal schedule that you can implement in your own worship ministry. So check that out in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.